In Africa, nurturing harmonious and dignified communities has remained a tall order. According to the findings of ISIS Wiki, undermining of institutions has led to a culture of violence. This culture has had a negative impact on the family institution and women have borne the brunt of this violence. This ignored violence at a family level has laid the foundation for MERS violations that eventually lead to full-blown national armed conflicts. The game of power has thus been dominated by insensitivity, which has always put women in the line of fire when eventually clouds of war gather. In many African countries, women have been displaced into IDP camps in thousands. But the greatest tragedy of all has been the sexual violence. Women are abducted, gang raped, maimed, mutilated, and forced into marriages. The small girls, may eight years, ten years, they will just come and then with the razor blood, you know, with razor blood, and then they will cut the a small girl because they want to rape her. If you refuse, they will kill you. These violations are meant to destroy the victim psychologically. Women's sexuality has been used as a weapon of war for far too long. They will just come and then collect all of us are women, even judge her like this one, you know. Maybe ten, ten people will rape her and then when they find your husband in the house, they will just say, you, you come. And then they, they, the husband will just lie and, they, and down. You are the mattress, the husband is the mattress. And then they will play sex when the husband is lying down and the woman is what? Up here. Esther from Liberia presented her mother to Isis Wiki. During the civil war, rebels poured sand in her eyes which left her permanently blind after she protested her daughter's rape. But who listens to the cry of such women? A teenage boy was picked and ordered to slice off our lips, nostrils and earlobes. We were forced to eat up the pieces. They soaked me in paraffin, struck a match three times and tried to light me up. Three times I fought back until one of them drew a huge bundle of grass from the roof of my heart and lit it. This time, it was impossible for me to fight off the fire. They torched me. I wailed and cried as I struggled to put out the fire. The pain in my head has never stopped. Across the entire continent, the effects of war and the trauma are very evident.
Even in African countries that boast of being peaceful, women buttering is still the order of the day. Many women are still taken as second-class citizens, and those who dare call for their rights are brutally silenced. From Kenya to Zimbabwe, elections on the African soil have proven to be a sad path to violence rather than liberty. In all this, women have been the worst victims. All this violence has left women emotionally broken. Others have died, while many have contracted HIV. Such level of human suffering has left states incapable of providing the much-needed help to women. I heard the echoes all around the world, and I saw the women with tears, weeping, crying for peace, help, with no one to listen. Isn't this the time to question our role in protecting the African woman? Have we done our own share to bring this horror to an end? The time is now for the church to use its power to act to ensure that the dignity of women on the continent is upheld.